Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures and bases from start to finish. This is part 45. I can't believe we're already at 45 lava bases, where I'll teach you how to paint a molten lava base, basically. So I started off by gluing two pieces of cork. I made sure that they were kind of, you know, rock-ish looking pieces of cork to a medium-sized base and I primed it black and today we will be using a combination of several paints. First we'll be using gray liner to paint the molten rock itself and then we'll be using the three reds from the Citadel range, Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Wild Rider Red. And then we're going to use yellows to make oranges and then the two yellows, Uriel Yellow and Flash Gets Yellow for the yellows and finally a 1-1 one -one combination of Flash Gets Yellow to white. And to make this even better, we're going to use a drying retarder, a product that delays the drying speed of the paints and keeps them liquidy for a very, very long time. And this is what we're going to use to create that molten mixture of colors appearance. It's very important. So we'll start off with a gray liner, and I'm going to apply gray liner very nicely to all of the rock, just to give it that you know grayish dark tone to it rather than black. Um, the recess will still be black because I'm just applying this to really the external parts of the cork. And if you really want to protect your cork, I recommend applying maybe a, um, a satin or matte varnish to the rocks after this step. That way it'll protect the coat and prevent the cork from actually breaking off and exposing the real color of the cork underneath the gray liner. That's okay. And when it was dry, it's time to start working on the lava part. Now what we're going to do is, this is the step that I'm going to do for all my paints. We'll start off with my fist on red, take a little bit out of the pot and put it into our palette. And this is what I'm going to do with all of the paint combinations. I'm going to thin it down with some thinner. That way it is nice and thin, great consistency, no brush strokes being shown, and it's great for blending. And then I'm going to add a couple drops of drying retardant, which will, as I said, prevent the paint from drying. And basically at the end of this, tutorial all the paints in my palette will still be wet and the paint itself will still be wet on the model and it's, it's gonna take a little bit of time to dry but that's what you need to create this molten um, blending of colors effect that we're going for today the goal is to not have an, a homogeneous color it's to have this nice pattern of, of blending colors so we'll start off by painting all of the base Mephist on red which will serve as the foundation color we're gonna start off with reds work our way to oranges to, and then to yellows the color of molten lava. Feel free if you want to get a little bit of this Mephisto Red at the base of the, um, of the very bottom part of the rocks themselves. Not on top of that. Luckily it's wet so I can easily wipe it off my finger. And as I said, I just apply it to all of the parts. And basically the lava is going to flow through the center of the rocks. And that's the key to this tutorial. You want to focus on the path that the lava is taking. And we're going to make that the brightest and away from the path is going to be the darkest, the red, so the closest parts to the rocks themselves. And then we're going to repeat this process with Evil Sun Scarlet. So as you can see, I'm going to map out the path that the lava is taking, start with the center, and then work my way towards away from the center. And keep a little bit of the Mephisto on red, at least to the very edges of the rocks. And as I mentioned, I did thin this down and used a drying retardant on it as well. That way it's going to be easy to blend and essentially we're wet blending but uh, it's a little more of a, an archaic version of wet blending, not very precise. Then we're going to repeat this process once again with, Evil, with Wild Rider Red. And you can see, starting with the center, work my way towards the parts away from the center. And now as you can see, it's with, with this, uh, we're just applying layer after layer of really uh, drying retardant and paint. So it's starting to mix a little bit, but it's not mixing perfectly. You can start seeing the, the patterns um, unfold of them. And if ever you find you apply too much of the middle color, feel free to just take a dry brush and just blend it more uh, by hand. And you can see what I'm doing. I'll do this after with another step. And now we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Uriel Yellow to Wild Rider Red to create an orangey color. And then I'm just going to keep adding Uriel Yellow to the combination. So start with the middle, work my way towards the recesses. And as I said, if you find you add too much, feel free to take another color. Uh, to, you can take the previous color, which should still be wet in your palette. Or just take a dried brush and you can easily reblend that color to make it look cooler. And then we repeat this process with a 1 to 2 ratio of Wild Rider Red and Euro Yellow, just adding yellow to the mix. But as you can see now, because they're all drying retardant paints, uh, the pattern is not a perfect amalgamized yellow. It's starting to really blend. You can see some parts of red, some parts of yellow, some parts of orange in there. And they're really starting to like mix and congeal. And that's what we're kind of going for for this lava, a flowing lava appearance.
And as I said, if you are unhappy with it, feel free to take up one of the previous colors and you can just reapply it and remix the paints to the edges. Um, I found I just added a little bit too much orange, so I wanted to bring it a little bit back to red. So I just, you know, was mixing the colors a little bit more towards each side by just bringing back the uh, Evil Sun's Scarlet, or sorry, the Wild Red Red towards the edges. But as you see now, we have a nice flowing appearance. And then after I started getting through oranges, what I did is I took a dry brush and took a little bit of the paint and just added a little bit of a dry brushing to the sides of the rocks to create a little bit of an object source lighting feel to it. That way it's starting to light up the rocks around it, the brightness of the lava. And um, I only started doing this with the oranges, and I'm going to do this with the yellows as well, just to create a little bit of OSL. If you want to do this, feel free. Uh, if you don't like the OSL look or object source lighting look, you don't have to do it at all. And then I just added a little bit more yellow to the mix, so it's now it's a 3 to 1 ratio of hero yellow to wild red red. Repeated this process by adding it to the middle and then blending it towards the sides. And we're just going one color at a time. And by blending this with this drying retardant paint, it creates this really nice flowing appearance is what we're going for. So this is a great step if you're taking we're doing multiple bases at the same time because the drying retardant will keep your paints wet and, uh, and very flowing. As I said, the key is just to thin it down a little bit and then uh, add the drying retardant. As you see, I'm just blending it the same colors so now we have a nice flowing color and then once again I took the that combination of paint and then did a quick dry brush on the sides of the rocks that are facing the lava part that way it just creates a little bit of an object source lighting look to it a little brightness and then I did this process once again with just pure aerial yellow so I started down the center and now I'm just working with a very thin line. Each, you'll notice each step, I'm going more and more towards the center and less and less farther away. So I will eventually switch up brushes to a thinner and thinner brush because I'm just focusing more on the central part of the base. And you wanna get it all over the place. So once again, I just started with the yellow, start with the center line and then blended it towards the outsides. But I still getting that nice, it's not an amalgamous line, it is very, uh, it, it, there's patches of orange in there that are lines of yellow and it just really does flow. And then I took that same color and did the OSL on the rocks. Next with Flash Gets Yellow. As you see for this one, I'm just doing a very thin line down the center of the base, which is the flowing pattern. Another cool way is to have a third rock in the middle of the base and then you can split it, the pathways, which is, also looks great. And then you just repeat this process, but you, you split the pattern. So just adding a little bit down the middle and then blending it and then taking my dry brush, dry brushing the sides. And then finally a one to one ratio of flash gets yellow and white scar. Just the very center line. It's a very, very bright yellow at this point because we're, you know, it's, it's white scars plus flash gets yellow, which is the two brightest colors, you know, Citadel has. And just down the center and blending it. And is it at any point you're unhappy with the blending, you can go back to the previous color and re-blend the sides easily with this step because they're all drying retarded to the paints. And that's it. So the next step is to give it tons of time to dry. I let it dry for about eight hours because of the paint, but as you can see now we have that really nice flowing appearance. It's not just an amalgamous one to one to one color. It's a really nice blend of colors. And then what I did was I cleaned up the rim of the base, obviously now because I was a little bit messy. So now the lip of the base is now nice and clean. And then what I did was I took a gloss varnish and applied it to all the lava base. So that way, uh, just the lava itself, just to get a nice shiny flowing appearance to it. That'll be nice and shiny. And there's a great contrast between the shininess of the lava and the flat appearance of the rock since I applied a matte varnish to the rocks themselves. And as you can see, there's a bit of object source lighting so that the brightness of the yellow is reflecting off the rocks itself. And there's some nice red tones near the base of each rock. And that's what we're going for. So now it's a very liquidy flowing lava base. And that's how I like to make my lava bases. And you can just easily perch a model on top of those two rocks and they can stand there and look really happy on top of his lava base. This is gonna be great for Grey Knight armies, or I've seen it done with Space Wolf armies, really nicely done by like Cody Rue, great lava bases. Or if you don't wanna do the three-dimensional look of the rocks with quarks, you can just simply paint the colors of the rock using the gray liner onto the base as well. I just like three-dimensional bases when I'm doing a lava approach. That way it looks like they're perched on top and climbing over the lava and looking all awesome. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101.
And stay tuned for part 46, which is just around the corner next week as always. But if you don't want to wait for next week, check out The Warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel, where not only we get to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes, you'll also get to see start-to-finish paint tutorials, battle reports, and just some awesome wargaming content. So go ahead and check out The Warp. I think you'll love it. I am certain you'll love it. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.